What's up? Hey, King, nice to see you, man. Yeah, good to meet you finally. Okay, we're gonna rapidly cover our little booth here at Con yeah. Expo 23. This is the hit of the show. This, my friends, is called a Gunnison. What this is is a severe duty off-road field service truck. First thing you're gonna notice is it's got this really cool front end design. We treated the entire front end with a polyurea. Notice that it's got the rigid lights incorporated into the front bumper. These MPT tires, 365 80 R20. It's got a two and a half inch lift. And if you come back here, we've custom fabricated this step to help us get in and out of this beautiful Chevy. Now, when it comes to a summit body, the first thing you're gonna notice is that the front of our bodies are all coated with the polyurea material. The second thing you're gonna notice is that we manufacture our doors out of aluminum. It's a two piece aluminum and we use a higher grade of hardware. So if you look at this hardware, you're gonna see that what we pay for is better fixtures. These rollers up at the top, it operates very smoothly. And with the three point attachment mechanism, what you're gonna end up with is a nice firm closing door. It provides a level of compression so it seals and sucks the door okay. in. Another difference between a Summit and some of the other competitors is we're gonna spend the money and we're gonna use a higher grade of weather stripping okay. around the door. We're gonna put a seal here and we're gonna design the door so that moisture that does get behind this barrier is going to wick out. So it acts almost like a weep hole and it keeps the compartment you know, as tight and as dry as, as possible. Yeah. Now, this is our combo set. We experiment with different combinations. This is the one we've introduced at the show. Okay. If a client says, hey, like I got a color theme, we'll be happy to paint the faces of the drawers to match, you know, the customer's logo or to pack, you know, their color palette. And then up here, we're featuring the Milwaukee pack out, but we can design custom racking systems for any of the manufacturers. Okay. Now this has those maximal lights fixtures up here. Yeah. It also has the ribbon lights here. So you get lots of illumination like inside that. the compartment. A lot of times they light them from the outside edge. Absolutely. You don't really see anything, you know? Yeah, like it it kind of makes your compartment glow, but when you actually pull the drawer out, you can't see your inside. tools are out here, man. And, and now check that out. Did you notice that? Now look at this. Our drawers have a lockout feature. Yeah. Now yeah. we're not the first, but we do have that feature. So gravity isn't going to yeah. make you have to chase your drawer, you know, when you're on a job. Now here's something I'm, I'm really proud of. And this is, I call it moral content. It doesn't really do anything other than potentially protect the integrity of this wheel well in case there's a blowout or a mm -hmm. piece of equipment hits the side. Instead of it being a $5,000 repair, it can end up being a $50 repair. So you're saying this is like actually built feel up it. to take a... Yeah, I mean, feel that. So you that. can take your like 20 pound sledge to that, right? Or uh. a piece of equipment back up against yeah. it, man. Yeah, a buncher on a logging road. <laughs> now, check this one out. Now, this is another that thing... That, <laughs> this is another thing I really like about our bodies is that we have this Unistrut inside and this Unistrut gives us infinitely adjustable shelving. I've been saying that a lot lately because, uh, you know, I've worked out of these trucks for like 10 years now and and it's the little things that honestly make a big difference to guys because you're trying to make use of every square inch of your truck, every Absolutely. cubic inch of your truck, man. Absolutely. If you're paying for yeah. this much space, you're you want to be able to use it all. Exactly. exactly. Yeah. Now check this yeah, out. Yeah. This is something I think you'll like. Now on our big doors, you'll notice that there's a little tab here. Yeah. There's guys that are gonna attach a magnet bar, there's guys yeah, that are gonna attach a shell, bungee, yeah. you know, so it makes use of this dead like space that. up against the wall. So that's another yeah. summit feature. We also manufacture a whole bunch of different bolt bins, different configurations. You could have half drawers, half bolt bins. You want J hooks, you don't want to drill a hole. You got a 24 inch bumper with a V notch. It just is a nice place to help keep things organized back here. Yeah, when you're doing like a swing dry rebuild, you can just let her buck and put some pails on the end. Exactly. <laughs> now, we, other thing, will do is if the customer doesn't want line x on this with yeah i was gonna say i'm i like it bare because we we'll melt her through it right we'll also add a lip yeah and we'll also reinforce this top if the guys are going to be doing a lot of heavy duty forging yeah. and things like that now where it doesn't count we're going to use aluminum because you don't need big yeah. old heavy yeah. steel tailgate now big difference between summit is the fact that we're going to use these tie downs on the side yeah like well, i never understood why are you gonna put a it's, tie down on the floor they're and then they're full of crap too that's the worst part is they get full of junk all around them and i mean the side just seems like a natural place to put them that makes sense check this out this is a feature that we just kind of introduced at con expo which is right here yeah that's kind of cool yeah. what do you think mike you know it's such a simple thing yeah. and you haven't really seen it done a lot i will say i know brutus has done something similar but just 
making that like a standard thing that you can add like when you're building your truck yeah. i mean tell us what you want you we'll know, do that's it. that's cool that right there is yeah look at this most of the trucks are still using that type of step yeah and i call those the shin buster steps right so every truck i sell this is what i put on it i don't care i don't even ask them now the thing that we are either loved or hated for is a reputation with some of those yeah oh they got too much electronics yeah. all that stuff goes wrong that's okay. the number one thing I hear about because we don't have a lot of Summit up in Canada. And when I ask guys on the Facebook groups and stuff, it's love it or hate it. Exactly. You know? So let me explain. I'm going to defend. So, so make me love it. Man. I'm going to make you love it. Okay, <laughs> so here's how it works. If you're going to use a crane, you should do what the manufacturer recommends. Do you yeah. agree? Yeah. That means when you agree, you should deploy your outriggers, right? Yeah. So some guys are in a hurry and none of the cranes you mentioned have a crane uh, outrigger interlock meaning okay. if you pull up in one of the competitors trucks yeah and you want to go do a pick there is absolutely no requirement to set your outriggers you can just pick up whatever you want yeah. that does damage to the truck potentially yeah. puts you at risk Stuff. some guys don't like us because we're going to force you to use you your outriggers use before you yeah. gonna use your crane with summit i can stand back away from the truck properly deploy the outriggers i can see both sides if this is ever shown to a safety officer, everybody will buy a summit. Yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah. here's another feature. I like to do this little exercise where I stand out in the middle of nowhere. I grab a bunch of mechanics that are all smart. Yeah. Say it's a 12,000 pound crane. And I go, okay, guys, how much can I lift right here with this 12,000 pound crane? I'll get answers all over the rainbow. Yeah. They don't know. And that just demonstrates how many times a person attempts a pick that they shouldn't yeah, attempt, they're right? They're overlifting, overloading. They're overlifting. Yeah. Okay. With Summit, I would just stand underneath my hook where I want to do the lift, and I'd look down at my remote, and it would tell me exactly how much weight I can lift. So it's seeing the distance from the it's controller to your... So here's what it's doing. It's measuring the left, right, yeah. front, back, angle of the boom, okay. and how many feet of stick. And it's doing that math yeah. rapidly, and then it's giving me a mathematical equation. Yeah. It's telling me... Now you got to admit that is kind of cool, right? That is cool because we've had issues like that where I'm trying to figure out like how much do I got to kind of move around and shuffle things and kind of edge my truck right up to the bumper of a machine to, to make this pick because I know it's going to be at the top of my exactly. load chart, you know, and you're getting the tape measure out and you start doing trigonometry and it's, it's more than most of us want to do. Uh, Absolutely. We always go back to this is that like the job is hard enough. Like, why make it harder? If there's things that you guys can do for these guys to make it easier. Oh, my and God. At the end of the day, we're all lazy, man. We want the easiest route, right? Is that, is that so, like a summit guy? I think I'm uh, getting you. Okay, here, take it out, take it out, take it out, take it out. There's going to be situations where you are on a job. Yeah. You're the more experienced guy. And you have to give the remote to the less experienced that person. And he's not going to tell you or she's not going to tell you. Yeah. She's kind of scared because she's got your life and everything else in her hands, right? So well, why don't we help them out a little bit? Why don't we go like this? I'm gonna go to crane settings and I'm gonna put this truck in novice mode. I'm gonna push a button, I'm gonna derate my crane by 30%. I'm gonna slow everything down just a okay. tad. Does it just slow down but the same load capacity? Every or? load capacity exact same. I just okay. slowed everything Everything's down. Everything's just slower. Okay, yeah. that's pretty cool, right? Yeah. I got one more. If you are an object that I want to avoid at all costs, yeah. what if I told the crane to avoid you? What if I said, come up here, go over cam, go around and come around. And I did a 360 degree perimeter fence. And then I walked over to my truck and I go protection on. And I never had to worry about hitting you upside your head. Would okay. that be a cool feature? Yeah, that could be handy, especially if you're getting real close to like cabs or something on a machine and you got a rookie uh, on that. I got more, right? What if you had a guy that went out on a job site? Yeah, boss, I was there at 6 a.m. I said the outriggers, I was going, I was on the job, okay? Yeah. What if you walked over to the truck and I go, oh, oh there's an electronic no tattletales top tail. there. Yeah. No tattletales there. Yeah. Advanced safety electronics isn't a sales gimmick. Okay? Yeah. We're trying to protect this asset and we're trying to protect the operator. Yeah. That's basically yeah, all there is 100%. to it. We had a situation uh, last year where I was on a, or I sent my guy out on a job and, uh, you know, he goes and he stows the crane and he takes off in a hurry. And he's driving down the highway and then I take the truck the next day to go out to another job and I go to set up my crane and I don't have my remote. And, uh, you know, I wasn't the happiest guy in that moment. And I'm on the phone and I'm, you know, 
talking to Carson and you guys know how I talk to Carson and sometimes we can get heated because he's an apprentice and I'm a journeyman and I'm trying to teach him how to do things, how to not cost me money or my customers money. At the end of the day, the remote ended up being on the top of my service body. Luckily it didn't slide off because I have an aluminum body and there's no magnets. Oh. There's nothing, it's, it, it stayed right on the top of the side pack sliding around from, it does a three hours, three hours worth of driving, Bush Road too. So oh, I'm glad you mentioned that. Yeah. That the single number one complaint about Summit is, oh yeah, that stupid light in the cab is always flashing and beeping and it drives me crazy. So let me just clear this up for you once yeah. and for all. There are only three reasons why that cab light will flash. If the boom isn't put back, and when I say that, there's a sensor that if you hit a pothole, it can pop up in the air and trigger it. But if the boom has to be put back, the outriggers have to be retracted. That kind of makes sense, right? Yeah. You want the, the outriggers retracted before you drove off. And this $2,500 remote stuck on the side of a D9 and you're on your way home? Yeah. Wouldn't you want it to slap you upside the head and remind you? Yeah, Carson. Okay. <laughs> That's what ours does. So that's it for all the yeah. all the naysayers about Summit. Yeah, I think those are three valid reasons why you should be alert you know, before you drive off. As an owner operator, I'm I'm the one paying for this. When you guys forget that stuff, I'm gonna have that thing flash right at you until you remember. I wanted to scream at you. Now that said, if you had a Summit yeah. and you didn't have your remote, you would operate your full crane right here from the yeah. control panel. Yeah. So I'm just saying, man. I mean, I got know. I got Tesla's the jumpers. I can go up there and start doing that, but that's a pain in the ass, you know. Oh, <laughs> Tesla's the jumpers. Yeah, they go off the Wait, go off the solenoid, man. Oh yeah, so you can There's do all every your electrical connection in the whole truck right there. Nice. I'm telling you, can't buy a summit. <laughs> we'll see. I'm uh, I'm I'm uh, stubborn. <laughs> what can I say? <laughs> Let's do one yeah. more truck here, guys. So this was in a peach field. It's an 87 peat cab over. It was falling apart. And, and so the customer said, you know, I think I'm going to make a service truck out of it. So they contacted Summit. They took over the refurb of the entire cab. We didn't do that part. We built the back of the truck. And what you have is a custom service truck. So everything you see here was designed and fabricated by Summit truck bodies. This is an aerosol can holder. These are our standard shells. That's our standard 5,000 watt inverter that we can install. We painted the interior black and that's another difference between us and our competitors is we actually do paint the inside of our bodies. Okay. okay. Now the gas filled shocks we use are bolted on so they don't fall off. They still break but they're replaceable. They're not going to be completely destroyed. In this compartment, everybody needs wet sounds when they're on the job site. Back here, you have what we refer to as a combo body. So anytime we make a dual purpose service truck with a crane and a lube system, we refer to as a combo. What do you think? I like it. You know, I, I hate buckets, man. Right? I mean, <laughs> and you know, it goes back to like certain sites you work on. There's things like secondary spill containment on buckets. You can't put a bucket straight on the ground. You have to put it on a pad or something. There's little things like that, you know, and just the fact that you show up like this, they're not going to be looking at you like you're going to be leaving oil spills on things. And exactly, you know, it's all that little stuff. Now, here's another nice feature that a lot of guys don't know that we can spec out on virtually any of our service bodies. So anytime we have a horizontal compartment, yeah. we can have it opening like this. So you just have to remember to ask us that this is an option that you would like to take advantage of. Yeah. But you can imagine on a hot day that this might be the difference between remaining functional with, and not becoming overly, you know, overheated and dehydrated. Now, <laughs> come over and take a look at this. So okay. here are your outrigger pads. Oh, nice. And you got a filter, use filter storage box. Now, this particular truck is equipped with the new Van Air 300 amp multi-function hydraulic unit. This unit runs the entire truck. What's cool nice. about this is that not only does it have a 60 CFM air compressor, yep. screw compressor, it's got a generator, it's got a 300 amp welder. And the thing that they did different than everybody else is they now partnered with Lincoln and it's actually a Lincoln branded product on um, which all that chopper yeah. technology. Yeah. So it's got a real welder in it. I like how you guys fit it on the back there. It's like seamless with the cabinet height and everything. Like, yeah. That's men. Another thing we do that's kind of cool is this apparatus here. We can accommodate all different types of towing situations. Okay. Every truck we sell is shipped with one of these vice mounts. And now because this is an overly tall compartment, this yeah. space is stretched out. 
but the functionality of this compartment is the same for every single one of our trucks. Yeah. So your air reel is there, you got a payout door in the back, and the air discharge is right there with a little butterfly nice. valve, okay? Now here, there's your drawers, lots of versatility here. You got integrated LED lighting. You got your mood lighting. Yeah. You got your integrated bolt bin, and then you've got all of your cables. Now, nice. come over and take a look at the interface for the Aeronarc i300. So everything is easily accessible. So your direct, your DC yeah. charge, your welder, inverted power at 120 volts, your 220 power is all here and all your control multifunction is at this one single box. So it makes it really clean. Mm -hmm. Your Aluma reels take up a lot less space and there's plenty of space for your bottles. The integrated headache rack gives visibility. Um, you got your integrated stop and turn signals. So what do you think? It's a beautiful truck, man. But the uh, yeah. Chevy is better, right? I, it, you know what? I'm an off-highway guy. It's a little tall for me, but I'd probably go for that over this, right? But it's a nice build. You know what? That just showcases the stuff you guys do. It's, it's different ends of the spectrum, right? Now I'm going to change hats a little bit. So now I'm talking just as a professional salesperson trying to advise you of where I think the future's headed. So I'm not a wrench turner, but this is where I think the industry's yeah. headed. What these are are 5.2 kilowatt batteries. They're LiPo, which stands for lithium phosphate. They have individual cells and each cell is coated with a thermal material that can be preheated in your environment. What makes these batteries kind of special is the fact that they can handle multiple cycles. Yeah, multiple down. cycles yeah. without losing their energy capacity. Yeah. So we can get 5,000 cycles out of these batteries, which is equivalent to about six to eight, nine years worth of normal okay. use. And that's about comparable to what you would get out of an engine, you know, before you yeah, have to it in. Yeah. What's unique about this application is they also built the tools that can run off the batteries. And it's 45 CFM, 175 max PSI, yep. run balls out at 150 PSI, and it works perfectly and it's half the, the sound decibel yep. of a normal compressor. They also came out with a, a hydraulic module that runs off the battery that can run a full hydraulic crane. Yeah, the EPTO you're yeah. talking about? Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. really amazing, right? So you can, like going on to that, you can still retrofit a truck that maybe has a PTO when you're replacing Absolutely. like your chassis and you don't want to have a new chassis with a PTO drive on it. Yep. You can go and retrofit your compressor crane package and everything with Absolutely. electric, right? Now, the other thing you're going to do is more and more guys are not doing the big old fancy welding, so they may not yeah. need a Bobcat 225 or a 260, yeah. you know, whatever those Lincoln 330s. They yeah. may not need that. They may be able to get the job done with just a little suitcase portable battery yeah. welder. So the way that that welder works is you don't even have to plug it in. It has a battery in it, and you can go to your Oh, site. it's a battery-powered welder. It's a battery-powered welder that can be plugged in, but it can be just taken, and it's 140 amps. So you don't even have to drag anything behind you. You don't have to drag anything behind yeah. you. Now, for the guys that have to do more welding and still want to stick with this system, there's a bunch of different welders that we can install for them. Miller and Lincoln both manufacture them, okay. and they'll be hard mounted. But instead of being powered by gas or diesel, they're going to be powered by the electricity. Now, another cool thing about these, this system is we also are going to need power to run our hand tools, right? Yeah. All of our things and charge up our batteries. So. We have from anywhere from 6,000 to 10,000 watts, pure sign of power available. Now we don't have to have an auxiliary generator in the welder to run our stuff. Now, yeah. as you guys start to grow, more and more of your customers are gonna to start to switch over to battery electric. And you're still gonna to have to go service them, right? Yeah. There's gonna be a piece of equipment that's dead. Well, with this setup, you would have a level two charger so you can get that equipment charged up and get it moving without you having to get a tow truck in sight. Now, the other thing you're going to be able to do with the system is they, they have an HVAC integration, okay. which means that you can tie this to the chassis AC system yeah. or heater and be able to keep the cab cool without the truck being on. Yeah. Now, the best thing that I like about it and the reason I think these guys have hit a home run is that it charges from the truck. Yeah. That's cool and it's got a shore power option so i can plug okay. it at home yeah or i can plug it to 220. so i mean i think this and is that's where a the quick breakaway design so that you can just take off out of your driveway without unplugging it absolutely right. yeah i'm exactly. obviously joking but you know what guys are gonna do they're gonna forget that 
they're going to forget to unplug it or they're not going to plug it in at night and they're going to be rolling around the dead battery nope. the next day because it charges up off the altimeter. Well, that's what i was going to say is that you got that auxiliary alternator and i think you even said it will charge up even if you don't have the auxiliary uh the big secondary that. alternator it'll yeah. still charge up off it the truck as well the 20 or 12 to 48 volt charger correct one of the things they brought up with us was like range anxiety the so brand has got a tesla because he's kind of a nerd If you guys follow any of the electric truck stuff or anything like that, that's always the elephant in the room that nobody addresses. You know, one of our buddies, um, Chase, uh, does the uh, Edison trucks. I don't know if you've seen them. Mm -hmm. So he's not far from us. And that was their big thing was like range anxiety, trying to get people, you know, there's like no infrastructure in Canada to charge an electric truck at the top of the Coke. Yeah. And we work up there, you know, all the time. Sure. Right. So if I'm going up there on a call and I have no infrastructure to charge my truck while I'm up there, you know, that was the big thing with um, the Van Air guys were telling us about range anxiety. That's why they wanted to kind of ease that with the, uh, the you know, the, the charging as you drive. Going forward, electric is kind of coming. It's not really going away. Correct. It's one of those things you kind of have to get used to it. And the, the more it kind of becomes normal, the more, you know, we're going to have, uh, you know, charging stations and all that. And we're going to find ways to adapt to it. You're not going to be dead in the water in the middle of the bush. There's going to be a way to get you out, right? Well, you guys are going to lead the pack yeah. because you, you guys it, are yeah. the ones that are going to be providing that emergency service. You're going to be providing, you know, the repairs to that equipment. So yeah. it makes sense that you have to incorporate some of it yeah. into your trucks. How are you going to take care oh, of it exactly. if you don't have it? So yeah. that's what I see. But the last thing I wanted yeah. to show you is this particular crane is our electric over hydraulic version. Okay. And it's made by Summit. We have a 4,000 pound and a 6,000 pound crane. And it's nice that when Summit, the drawers, the body, the crane is all manufactured by us. You're not gonna have to worry about dealing with other vendors and you know everybody pointing fingers at somebody else. So yeah. back here, we're seeing more and more service facilities adopting, I call these rapid response vans. Yeah. And you can now fit these things. So this is another option that we offer, which is a light drawer pack yeah. and custom arrangement so that your technician can work inside the comfort of a van, yeah. have all his tools. That's a battery powered lube skid okay. running cool. off 12 volt batteries. Yeah. And that gives your technicians even more flexibility. So now you yeah. don't have to put him in a $200,000 truck. You yeah. can put him in an $80,000 truck and still make money, you know, and take care of your clients. Yeah. Everybody runs a little different because on the opposite end of that, you get the guys that are the big truck gang. They want the tandem. This is like, I just want one giant truck that has everything in it. Right. You know, like at the end of the day, it's like we came down here and we've seen a lot of different things, a lot of different ways guys run. Like we don't see a lot of these really big trucks up in Canada. Right. It's a lot of 550s. There's a lot of little runabout trucks and running repair stuff, right? Sure. But well, it's cool seeing different setups from around the world, right? Like you guys see it on the Facebook groups too, right? Absolutely. Everybody's got a different way of running, so. Well, that's what we're trying to do at Summit. We're trying to give you guys some options. Yeah. Did I convert you yet? Uh, you know what? I'm not a sellout, man, but it's just, maybe in a couple of years when we're actually looking for a new chassis. Wait, wait, wait. That's, long, that's our lead time anyway. That's it. That's perfect. All right, <laughs> sounds good, man. I'll wire you guys a deposit after the show. <laughs> Yeah, so that's the Summit booth, you guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Reach out, ask questions. We'll follow up with KJ at some point. And if you guys got questions, you know, you can ask the ask the real stuff because, you know, that's I'll, I'll ask it. I'm not afraid. I don't care. I'll embarrass myself and them on camera. It doesn't matter. At the end of the day, we want to see what you guys are asking about. And uh, because we're, you know, we're all on the same side and uh, we're out here to get it done. So Absolutely. Thank you, bro. Appreciate it. All right, it, man. man. Well, thanks a lot, KJ. Appreciate it. My the, pleasure, uh, bro. Tour. Thanks. Thanks for coming by, man. Appreciate Thanks. you. All right. All right. Peace, y'all.